Charity Religions 102, Wayne County Community College District. Uh, today we want to continue comparing religions because this is a comparative religions class. Uh, and today we want to look at uh, the religion of the Buddha, the religion of Taoism, but most importantly, moreover, we want to look at Christianity. There's a major comparison between all three religions. The religion of Taoism, which is uh, frequently spelled uh, T-A-O-S-I-M, believes in balance. Actually, the religion of Tao tells us to live a life of rhythm or to go with the flow. Uh, just as one of my favorite movies tells us uh, that we need to experience Kuma Matata. If you remember, uh, the Lion King uh, was lost, and the Lion King went to an area that was his refuge or his sanctuary, and he met two friends. And those two friends told him that he needed to live a life of Akuma Matata, which is Swahili, which means don't worry, get balance in your life. Uh, so therefore, Taoism tells us to have balance and go with the flow. The other is the religion of the Buddha. Uh, the Buddha tells us that we should find a middle way. Uh, and if we remember the life of the Buddha, the Buddha's middle way was like this. The Buddha was reared in a area of affluence. His dad had all types of riches in the foothills of the Himalayas. Uh, consequently, he wanted the Buddha, his son, to have riches and be protected. Consequently, uh, he experienced a life of having all types of gifts and all types of riches coming his way. The Buddha had, for example, a uh, home for the winter, a home for the summer, a home for the fall. The Buddha had a concubine. He had every, all that he wished to have. Therefore, when the Buddha got to be about 25 years old, he realized that riches were not it. And therefore, he went on a journey. He went on a journey into a far country. The journey caused him to live a life of poverty. Can you imagine going from riches to poverty? When the Buddha came to enlightenment, when the Buddha came to his awakening, he developed a theory called finding the middle way. Not too much of this and not too much of that, but finding a middle way in life. And even when we look at philosophy, when we look at the great philosophers of Greece, here's one, Aristotle. He said that in life, you need to find what's called a golden mean. In other words, you've got to live life like it's golden, as the song says, golden, golden. But in finding the golden mean in life, one must not have too many riches and one must not have too much poverty, but find a middle way. But the one that stands out, the religion that stands out above all religions is Christianity because Christianity desires for you to find a centering point in life. Find a point in life where you are well balanced, well equalized, well centered. And today we're going to look at about seven scriptures and seven areas in our lives where we need to find balance. We need to find that middle way. Well, first of all, we need to know that Christ means an anointing. And then if you are Christian, Christianity means that you are Christ-like. So all these scriptures that I'm going to show you are regarding you living a Christ-like life. Here we are. Let's find the middle way. But for brevity today, I'm going to say, let's find, or what is your middle seat? My idea of a good weekend is curling up with a book 
and reading a book. I try and read a book a month. This month, even though the book was written in 2017, here I am taking on one of the most fantastic books that I should have read a long time ago. And that is a book written by Michelle Obama, and the title of the book is Becoming. Now, I must admit, I only got to the first two chapters. But there is an area that stood out in the first two chapters that has been like a light bulb that has gone off in my mind. Michelle Obama writes this, that when she was a child, in learning how to play piano, she had to find the middle C. And she coined that phrase in the first two chapters. She said that her and Barack have become the first family only because they have found the middle C in life. They have learned to live the kuma matata. They have learned to find the middle way. They have learned to go with the flow. And today I'm urging you guys in this class to find your middle C. What is your middle C? When Michelle was a child, She lived in a two-family flat in Chicago. She lived in a typical urban household like many of us. Downstairs might have been a little larger because that was where her Aunt Robbie lived, and Aunt Robbie was a piano instructor. And then there was upstairs where she, her mother and father, and her older brother lived. Aunt Robbie was a typical school teacher. You know, one of the school teachers we probably came in contact with when we were younger. She was very stern, very rigid. And she said that Aunt Robbie made her living by teaching the piano. Every day, Michelle says she'd wake up early in the morning and she'd hear the rhythm and the beat of pianos of children who are learning to play the piano. It'd go on all day long until the evening. So she said when she got to be about five years old, she began to take her first piano lessons. She felt like since she heard her aunt all those times teaching young people and hearing the rhythm and the melodious beats, and she could hear the flow of the piano going from downstairs upstairs, she said that she felt that she would be an expert the first time she played the piano. So down the stairs, Michelle went. And when she sat at the piano with her little legs dangling from the piano stool, the first thing Aunt Robbie said to Michelle, she said, okay, Michelle, in her stern voice, find the middle C. Michelle said she panicked because she, thinking that she could automatically find the middle C, would be difficult or be easy. But uh, uh, suddenly it was difficult for her. She looked and she looked and then she remembered that there was a chip on the middle C, and therefore she could go right to that chip on the ivory of that middle C. That's a lesson for us in life. We need to find the middle C in our life, and when we're seeking for the middle C, we should go to those places in our lives where there have been some difficulties, some disgruntlement, some pain, some pressure, and therefore, at that chipping point, we can work our way out to the whole keyboard in life. Remember Stevie Wonder made a whole album. His first real popular album was Songs to the Key of Life. And you need to sing your own song by finding your middle C. Well, what does Christianity say about finding the middle C? There are certain balances that you can take on. And I wish you all take your notes and take these notes down as I'm working on the board. First of all, you need to balance your time. Time is of essence for you. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, verse 1 through 8, for everything there is a season, and for every time there is a matter under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to love and a time to hate. The Beatles were not popular until they came out with the song, For Everything There Is A Time and A Season Under The Sun. And just like the Beatles who came from Liverpool 
in London, England, to not, from nothing to something, if you learn to realize that in your life there is a time and a season, and I believe that this is your season, and during your season you ought to take advantage, total advantage of your season. Next, you must have balance or find the middle C in your life by realizing that there is a balance for today and tomorrow. How do you live? You live your life in the now with expectations that Jesus is coming back again, with expectations that the power of the Holy Spirit is going to push you into tomorrow. You need to live your life as it is today. Jesus says in Matthew, the sixth chapter, verse 33 through 34, therefore be not anxious for nothing. Don't you worry about tomorrow. He gives this illustration before he sends his disciples out. He says that I'm sending you out to do miracles with all authority and all power to go into cities that you've never been in. And when you go in those cities, don't you worry about what you're going to say. All you've got to do is open up your mouth on my behalf and speak with the power of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit would put words in your mouth that would be healing for others. He even says that when you go to another city, don't you carry a purse, meaning don't carry money, or carry a script. Don't worry about what you're going to say by writing it down, but listen to me. If God takes care of the birds of the air, and they have no employment, no job. And if God takes care of the lilies of the field, truly, he'll take care of you. Too many of us worry about tomorrow, what we're going to do with tomorrow when today is here and we need to live in the now and now, not the by and by. And God will take care of you. So balance your today with tomorrow. What is the other aspect? You need to balance your time with moral people. Balance with moral or ethical people. Second Peter, the third chapter, verse 17 says, take care that you are not carried away. Notice that term, carried away with the error of lawless people. Here's one for you. Check this out. Jack and Jill went up a hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown, and Jill came tumbling after. Have you ever looked at that from a philosophical perspective? Here Jack is. He's going up the hill, and Jill is following Jack. Jill is not the one who fell. But she came tumbling after him because she followed him senselessly. Think about it for a moment. In our lives, many times, we follow people who are lawless. There are certain cases. For example, in Detroit, if you're riding with someone who has a concealed weapon in their car and they don't have a license for that concealed weapon, and you're just riding with them, and they happen to get stopped by the police. Guess who's going to jail? The person who drove and you who are the rider because you're just like Jill who followed Jack up a hill and came tumbling after. You say, well, wow, I may not drink, I may not do drugs, but if you're in a house and someone's doing drugs and you're not doing the drugs, you just happen to be there, you are following a lawless person, and if the police come in and arrest the person who is in the house, you will be arrested also. So therefore, we should not follow lawless people in our lives. What's the other area that we need to find the middle C in in our lives? We need to find the middle C in our lives when it comes to balance of our money. Balance of your money account. According to Hebrews, the 13th chapter, verse 15, you need to keep your life free of the love of money. Make sure that money does not rule your life and keep a balance account in your life. 
You need to find that middle C, or as some people used to say, find that C note in your life. Find that middle C in your life as far as your money is concerned. Let's do some calculation right now. For example, you say, I may pay the lottery sometimes, but I don't play it all the time. But when I play the lottery, I do. And you say, I, well, I play the lottery, and I play the lottery a dollar a day. Now, there are 365 days of the year. And if you play the lottery a dollar a day, and you have not won the lottery in the year, you spent $365 on the lottery. You need to balance your accounts. And think about balancing your money. For example, think about the casino. You say, well, I go to the casino, but I don't spend but $10 a day. Do you realize spending $10 a day at the casino is $3,650 a year? You need to balance your money. The Bible says that the love of money, not the lack of money, but the loving of money is the root of all evil. Money won't change it, as James Brown says. If you love God, he will bless you with financial revenue. If you love God, he'll make things happen for you. So you need to find the middle C in your life as far as your finances are concerned. Balance your checking account. Balance your savings account. Balance the monies that you spend on social activities. Balance your money and God will bless you. I wanted to make this little statement right here. For example, if you look at a dollar, on every dollar there is this right here. Notice, that looks like a what? A serpent. And if that becomes all it is to your life, you might as well put this through here and strike it out. Because that's what it's all about when you love money. The next area that I like to cover is you need to balance your worries. Stop worrying so much. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 7, Cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. Who is the him? The him is the Lord Jesus Christ. When it comes to balancing in my life, I balance through the love of Jesus Christ. This is my C, my middle C. Balancing your life through Jesus Christ. Would you go with me to Calvary? When you go to Calvary, it is a hill set in the center of Jerusalem, the middle sea of Jerusalem. On Calvary, there was a cross to the right, a cross to the left, and a cross in the middle. In between the two was the middle sea. Cast all your cares on Jesus, for Jesus cares for you. The next C that you need to balance, you need to balance your comfort level, the comfort level that you have in life. Remember, there are two natures in you. There's a nature of good and there's a nature of evil that's within you, residing within you. I frequently say this poem, there are two natures dwelling within my breast. One is foul, the other is blessed. The one I love, the other I hate. The one I feed will dominate. You need to balance the level of your life, find that middle C, hit that harmony, and bless your life by finding that middle C. The Apostle Paul put it this way in Philippians, the fourth chapter, verse 11. He says, not that I'm speaking, because I need something. He says, I've learned in whatever state that I'm in, not state like the United States, but whatever position that I'm in, I've learned to be content. I've learned to have balance. I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. I, in other words, I've learned to have riches. I, I, I've become the point in my life where I've had many riches, and then I've learned to live in poverty. 
He says, but whatever state I'm in, I'm content because I can do all things through that middle seat, through Christ who gives me the strength. That's our lesson for today, guys. What a blessing it's been. Thank you.